<laughs> I clicked the wrong button and I lost my screen. Hey, everybody, it is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. What is happening? I'm your one host, Vegas J. And tonight I'm going to say Vegas, uh, United States of America J, because with me is my only, my second male co host and my first Canadian male co host, Craig Dawson. How are you, Craig? Well, good. Excellent, Jay. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> What is going on? How is everybody this evening? Man, do we have a jam-packed show for you. Tons of good stuff, lots of content. But let me get right to my first segment, and then we'll introduce our guest, because as always... Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum of a different mug, and I tie it all to my guest and my co-host. And tonight, my guest is a good friend from back home in Cleveland, Annette Rossetter, how are you, Annette? Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you so much. How are you doing tonight? I am great. All right, so you all seen this rum before, but man, it's just so apropos. I had to bust out my Cleveland spiced rum. It's pretty bitching. Absolutely. And see, Very this good. is a bridge that is constantly in the up position. It has been for 20, 30 years. And this is an area of Cleveland called the Flats where there's a bunch of bars. And I used to work down there. And every time, every summer, once a summer, a drunk would climb all the way up this bridge and then get stuck at the top. Because <laughs> it's easy going up, but when you're drunk and you're at the top of this, like, you know, eight-story building, you got to climb back down. Not so easy. Hmm. Now, tonight, I'm doing the unthinkable. I'm drinking out of a Sarah. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, welcome. I talk a lot about Tiki stuff, and the one thing we talk about is Sarah's. It's called uh, Smash and Run Away. Rid the world of shitty Tiki mugs, Okay. But I'm drinking out of this Sarah, this plain ass coconut mug, for one reason and one reason only. My guest is from Cleveland. My co host is from Canada. And I'm a plain coconut, huh? No, no. <laughs> okay. Between Cleveland and Canada, oh, there are a bunch of. <laughs> no, no, no. Between the two, there are islands in Lake Erie. And this is from Middle Bass Island. Oh, no. Which are the party islands halfway between like, oh. Cleveland and Canada. So, <sighs> well, cheers, Jason. Cheers. And uh, what are you drinking tonight, Annette? Um, going pretty basic. I uh, got some Sailor Jerry's and a uh, Diet Pepsi decaffeinated, so I'm not up all night. In my um, nifty monogrammed A glass that I got at a garage sale this summer. That is so, awesome. Oh, and with a swizzle stick from Porco's, which I went to last night, which is a Cleveland's Tiki Bar, renowned Tiki Bar. I went to with my friends, Chris and Julie Brown. There's a shout out for you. And I thought I had a Frankie's swizzle stick too, but all I could find was um, the one from Chicago, um, Lost Lake. So anyway, you, and <laughs> that's where I we're at. I already know the answer to this question, but Craig, sh show me how Canadian you are right now, sir. What are you drinking? I'm drinking my Tim Hortons coffee, <laughs> extra large, <laughs> with my Boston cream donut, because it's roll up the rim, eh? And I can win the prize under here, so. There you go. See? All right, Annette, enjoy the show. Sit back, relax. We'll see you at the half hour mark. Just make sure your pants are on. You're not picking your nose. Okay. Woo. All right. Let's get right to it, shall we? Time for our scores of the week. Well, Craig and I will tell you the cool stuff we sold this week. They are usually BOLOs. BOLO stands for Be On The Lookout. Things that you should be hunting for when you're out thrifting to, sh to make you lots of money. And let's start uh, with Craig. Okay, no. Uh, one of the things you'll probably find a lot of places, um, and we always try and pick these up, are uh, the role-playing or war games. Uh, this was actually from a, a local place. We found seven of them. They're not necessarily cheap. They cost us 19 bucks a piece, but we knew going yeah. into it what we could get for them. Um, we put them up, tried them for, we wanted to flip them pretty fast, but we tried them at 148, purposely knowing we'd probably get a best offer in the 100 mark. We didn't get the best offer, so we put them at the $105 mark and actually sold four of them in less than two days. Woo. So we made the money back on all of them. So anytime you see those things, grab those. Avalon Hills, War Games, things like that. This was from last summer was our $2 toonie, which is our $2 bill. Uh, um, we had a challenge up here on craft and it was find something for a toonie. This is actually a Hermes um, scarf. Uh, funny thing on it, which was great. We sold it for $177. It was one of those interesting things though, because 
the day it sold, we got someone who had an offer, made us an offer for 140 bucks and said, that's for my mom. Can I get it for 140 bucks? We said, sure. We put the offer out to him before he actually got a chance to buy it. Somebody else came in and bought it for 177 bucks. So we still got the price that we wanted from it. That did a lot of research though. We Googled things all over the place to find that. That is bitching. Yeah. I love it. Um, if you watch my video that I put up on craft, uh, I, on the thrifting board, Jason had it up there too. When I bought the really bad jeans that were the nasty, dirty, uh, bad monkey jeans that were all fakes. And this was the, the Sally Stanley smocking cleaner that you can't say five times fast. Easy. <laughs> um, this was what I stalked the old Italian couple around the, the store who they had it. And I saw it, I looked it up. I knew it was about 150 to $200 thing. They put it in their cart after me standing there for 15 minutes lurking above them. I was giving them the evil eye, everything I could, please, it's mine, give it back to me. Um, and they didn't. I went back that arrest that later that day because I thought there might be more of those bad monkey jeans and they put it back on the shelf. So I paid $14.99, I think, for it and put it on for please. auction. And it went to one seventy-seven fifty. So that <laughs> was that we were really happy. We paid for the other the the jeans oh, with it. Heck yeah. And, the last is, again, this is completely out of our comfort zone. We knew nothing about this. We're not camera people at all. And we were actually at a camera store that was closing in upstate New York. And they had these little plastic tags. And I said, what are they? And I said, well, they're actually the things when old school 16 millimeter movies break. These are the official Kodak pieces of paper that you stick on to join the movies back together to make them run again. I said, oh, that's interesting. How much are they? And they originally were saying, well, they're a dollar a piece. And I said, oh, okay. She goes, you know what? We've got like 10 boxes of these in the back. So why don't you give us five bucks for all of the boxes? Every box has 40 of these things in it. Each one of them has um, 20 in it. So we got about a thousand of them. And we are now, this says four available, two sold. We never want to put a high quantity in. No. We probably sold somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred or at least of these for eight bucks a piece. So a $5 investment that even this, the two sold would have paid for everything. So again, that was a, I, what's this? Okay, I'll try it, five bucks. Who, if it doesn't do anything, it goes into my garage sale or it goes back to a value villager savers. But yeah, this one that, doesn't. That is, a good, uh, that is a good tip is when you have a lot of something, you wanna make it feel like, uh oh, I better hurry up. Cause when I sell some tiki mugs, I'll have like six sitting here, the same one. I never put six cause there's no urgency. No. I might do, I might, if I go out of town for a week and I've got someone assisting me, I'll probably put two just in case. But on that, it's just one at a time. Make it look like urgent. All right, let me get to my scores. When I bought these, I, I don't know if I didn't realize it, but they were uh, junior size five. And I usually don't do kid stuff, but they were fun uh, converse that zip up. They're kind of rainbow colored. So I thought they were a ton of fun. And it took a little while, but I got 40 bucks for them and I paid $3.99 because uh, I had a coupon. So, I mean, uh, I was happy with my return very much. And uh, stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit, I've been buying. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So we, we did the close-up of the art because it'll catch your eye and people shopping on the phone. And then you have all these shots. And this is where I leave the photo studio, head outside and do some kind of like, you know, in the field shots because it looks better. And I did 12 shots to get all the angles and stuff. And uh, so I sold that for 70 bucks and I already got positive feedback. The customer was ecstatic. No and video of you riding it, though. No, no, no. These are Orange Tab 560s, 3630s, with the uh, new tag still. And I got uh, $50 plus $7 shipping for them. I paid $8.99. Oh, I paid $12 for the skateboard, by the way. And last but not least, I always got to show a good CD because, man, I've been crushing. I have sold $750 in the last two weeks of CDs. And I've only sold like 30 CDs, wow. but I've been selling a ton of $100, $80. This one was 60. I bought this Blue Oyster Cold CD for $2 and I sold it for 60 bucks on Amazon. If you're not doing CDs yet, you got to learn from me. If you're in the LA or Kansas City area, I'm going to be talking about my classes coming up because we we're really going to focus hard on media. All right. You've seen our scores. Now it's time for... Our duds of the week brought to you by WorthPoint. Had Craig and I used WorthPoint, we probably wouldn't have duds, but no matter how good you are, 
you still have duds. This is one of mine, and you think it wouldn't necessarily be a dud because it's a vintage Care Bear. It's actually a factory sample. Um, the thing that we can't for the life of us figure out is, and we've had we had a few of these listed, and we got these as part of a big batch at a garage sale. It's got things that you wouldn't normally see on it, like like tags that only would have been put on in a factory. Um, we have not been able to sell one of these things for like 15, 19, 20 bucks at all. We have quite a few of them, and I think Jason has a- Uh-huh, hold another, please for one quick second. Shot that shows you like how many we got. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Waldo? <laughs> so yeah, this is a, like a couple of them in there. The little blue one is called a Yawny, um, which you stick your fingers in behind their head and make them yawn. And the strange thing is, that's the only thing that we've sold. Two Yannis. Not Yanni the flute guy. Just... <laughs> so if oh, anybody needs a Care Bear... <laughs> that is such a great shot. Yeah, so if you need one or a hundred Care Bears, Craig's my boy. He'll he'll hook you up. He's got, a, he's got a sweet deal. He's ready to deal. All right, let's get back to the other dud. Uh, whoop. There we go. All right, there's your other dud. And the other one, again, it's one of those things that I stepped out of my comfort zone, but it's a dud because we're still just struggling with trying to sell something. We saw this. We were at a, a an estate sale. Somebody worked for Gerber in the 70s. We picked up a ton of stuff from them, including, like, they had these free tote bags that would have been given out in 1974 Baby Week. And for us, we think Gerber, babies, that's a huge name. It's, it's something we figured everybody will want Gerber stuff. We have this, we have diaper bags, we have original Gerber baby bowls that were giveaways. Nothing. It, we've tried all sorts of different price points. Now, we've only tried them to this point on eBay. So we're going to try them on Etsy um, and see if that helps us a little bit more. Because even from my standpoint, I thought this was a cute thing to frame. But it's so yeah. it's a, it, it didn't cost a lot, but it's a dud that's an unexpected thing. It's a dud that's a name brand you figure has got to have a good cachet to it and be fast flippers, but it just wasn't. Okay, guess what? I sold them all out finally. Two <laughs> years, all these stupid hats. Since I showed you guys last week, I sold the last two. So my assistant comes to me and she goes, Jay, there's no more. I'm like, yes. I, I sold most of them for seven bucks. I paid two. Yeah, this was the dumbest purchase I've ever had because I bought 20. It took two years, but they're gone. That, were, that really wasn't my dud. Uh, Jenko jeans. You know, Jenko does quite well if you find the vintage jeans. I found a hockey jersey. I thought this would be cool. No, I had it forever and it finally sold for 20 bucks. And I only paid like seven. So I made a couple of dollars, but it didn't have the same cachet that uh, the, the same uh, demand and price that the jeans do. So I, I won't get the Jenko jerseys ever again. And I want to show you this because I always show you guys the good $60, $100 CDs. Sometimes I screw up. Why I bought the Deer Hunter soundtrack that is readily available, I have no idea. Someone finally offered me $7 plus $2.99 shipping. I was happy to let it go. I think I paid three or four bucks for it. But I don't know why I thought it was a, a worthy purchase. You know, I'm really good at CDs. It's my mainstay. It's it's what I've been doing for 18 years. But even I make a mistake where I get home and go, why is this in my basket? I don't know what the hell's doing there. All right. Now it's time for where in the world has our stuff gone? Because if nothing else, you all should be shipping worldwide. If you're not. Craig, how many people are in Canada? A lot. <laughs> no, a lot of the United States. Canada's got like nobody. We got about 10% of the U.S. population. Yeah, so about 34 million, give or take. Yep. So if you're in Canada and you're only doing Canadian, you only got 34 potential, 34 million potential customers. You're in the United States, you have 300 million potential customers. If you're shipping worldwide, you have 7.4 billion potential customers. What kind of business model would it be to limit yourself to either 34 million or 300 million? Yeah. Ship your stuff worldwide. So Craig shipped... Uh, and I couldn't get the graphic together for some reason. Something happened right there, there, but it went to North Brighton, Australia. And what'd you sell, Craig? I sold, of all things, a Cirque du Soleil Las Vegas mug. <laughs> there you go. In less than 24 hours after I posted it, and their shipping was twenty dollars to Australia. So the they North. paid twenty three US. The the mug cost me ninety nine cents, but. I just liked the image, but I never expected that it would be going to Australia. 
in so a day. Can I, can I offer you a suggestion, Craig, for your title? Yeah. Us using quotes would really screw it up, screw it up in Google search. There is no need for those quotes around the O. Oh, okay. Yeah. And because it's at the Bellagio, that would have been, even though it's sold, I mean, I know it's sold, but just for future reference, if anyone's selling Cirque O stuff, it's at the Bellagio, which is a big name. So you definitely want to put that in your title too. I didn't even, I never would have even thought about putting on the, the hotel. That's a really great idea. Yep. All right. So I was able to do my graphic before my computer said, Pfft. and oddly, mine is going to South Korea. And I don't even know how to pronounce that. How was Singan I I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably not even remotely close. And so, uh, oddly enough, during the Olympics, but if you have never heard Mrs. Miller, when we're done, go to Google, look up Mrs. Miller, either downtown or these boots are made for walking, and you will be shocked because, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Miller was a bona fide singing star, and when you hear her, your brain will explode, and you'll be like, no way, Jay, and then I'll be like, yes, way, she even charted the top 100, all right? So just trust me, listen to it after the show. Kim's going to come on a little bit to talk about something. She it was introduced to Mrs. Miller the other day. I, I thought she was going to pee herself. It, it, that's how funny Mrs. Miller is. But I, I bought the CD for four bucks. So for 25 plus 15 shipping to South Korea. <laughs> all right. Yes. Yeah, Kim's in the chat going, she is great. <laughs> uh, all right. So we are now. There we go. Our thrifty tip of the week brought to you by stamps.com. Postage on, on demand. Print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home. I use it every week for all kinds of stuff. Stamps is a great, great uh, company. And this is Craig's thrifty tip. Yeah, one of the things that I, I used to do is I used to take the exact same path every time I went through uh, my vintage, like my thrifting stores. And a couple of times it hit me that as I was going through part one, I'd see someone walking from the back, for example, that had exactly something that I would have wanted and I would have grabbed if I'd thrifted. So what I try and do is I just say, switch up your thrift. Don't necessarily take the same map, kind of like Billy did on the, the family circus there. It's like, go, just don't, it doesn't mean pass up any place, but go to the left one time, go to the right one time, start in the menswear, then go to the ladies wear, then the next time start in the linens and go to the books. So. Just switch them up, and you never know what you may end up grabbing just before one of those other thrifters happens to be coming into the same place as you. I love that, because I'm a creature of habit. I go through my normal stores the exact same path <laughs> every single... Like, if I got to switch it for whatever reason, my brain hurts. So, yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right. So here's my thrifty tip. It, it, uh, I teased it earlier in the thrifting board, which is my Facebook group. If you've not joined, it is a free group for thrifters of all levels, sizes, ages. Uh, 38,000 members love to help. I found these really nice. This is Owl from Winnie the Pooh. And this is Tigger and Baby Roo from Winnie the Pooh. Nice uh, porcelain figures. And I found Winnie the Pooh. However, you know, if you're, you know, I grabbed this one and it was, I grabbed these two and they're in great shape. Looking at Pooh, I'm like, uh-oh, I think he's looking at something that is no longer there. <laughs> so don't get so excited that you would throw this in your cart. Because as you can see, I'm guessing a little duck or something was standing right there that is no longer there. So there's no point in buying this poo. <laughs> I said poo. So I love poo. When you find the first one and then the second one, make sure the third one's intact. Because I almost stuck this in my cart. I'm like, uh-oh. Something is missing. So make sure that you really are paying attention and don't get overly excited. So you left the puddle of poo. I left the puddle of poo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it's time for You Have Got to Be Ship Me, where we give you tips and tricks, what to do and definitely what not to do when shipping products worldwide. So the one for us, the one of the things that I thought we'd bring up is a lot of people in Canada uh, – when you try and order from the states, there are quite a few people who won't ship to the states, um, but they or ship to Canada, but they will ship to the states, and we have potentially no way to get them. But there are, and I want you to, to any Canadians to in here to look up cross border shipping or pickups or cross border companies. There's a lot of them around, uh, all around the edges of, of between the, the two countries. One of the main ones is a company called Kinek, uh, K N I K I N E K. And they actually have um, locations that are across the country and they're in every place you can think of. Some are in a furniture store, some people who have warehouses and you order, have it shipped to them. So in a lot of cases, you end up getting stuff shipped free to them or for virtually no money. And then when you cross the border, just plan a trip, 
people, those kind of places hold things for two, three, four, five months. So you could order stuff over the winter, then go in March and do a pickup weekend and grab a bunch of stuff. There's a few companies who also will ship that right up to you. So they'll have it delivered to their address in the US. They'll bring it across to Canada and then will actually ship directly to you. So don't be afraid to, to look at that. And for US sellers, if you have somebody from Canada who messages you, ask them, hey, have you got like a, a cross-border pickup? Can you do that sort of thing? Can you arrange that? You might end up being able to help someone up here find a way to get stuff and find a new way for you to ship. Hey, you know, it's one of those things too where too bad you didn't think of that. You know, once oh. commerce really got rolling, it's like, you know, Lyft and Uber being built because taxis weren't getting it done. You know, they someone figured out a better mousetrap and that's genius yeah. because you guys got headaches that you got to deal with and that's the great thing about your group, which we're going to talk to about in a little bit here. But, you know, Craig can talk thrifting and I can talk thrifting. But, man, if you're a Canadian seller, you need to know these ins and outs, which I don't, we don't have to worry about. So that's why Craig's Group Craft is really a, a great thing to help you. All right. So my tip, which I teased in the little live thing I did in the thrifting board earlier, was Skechers, a major company, did something with their box that really, really shocked me. Now, corporate culture tells you, you got to move quick. That's why on Amazon, you'll get a box this big with this in it because <laughs> they'd rather have less boxes and move quicker. So it seems like a waste to us, but it isn't to them because they can move faster. So Skechers did something. I was shocked, shocked. And here's what they did. They franken boxed the box. They cut it down and then folded it over. I have never seen a major company recut their box ever ever so there's the one side and there's the other so they had a taller box and they took the time to cut it and bring it down so we talk franken box and sometimes we're making two boxes a bigger box and sometimes we're taking a bigger box and making it smaller i have never seen that from a major company before i do it all the time but that's what i do I just wish that Disney would do that. Because if yeah. you order stuff from Disney, they are the worst people for putting like one small thing in three air bubble packages. <laughs> but, but the reason is because it it takes time to have oh, yeah. too many boxes. And so when they did this, I was like, wow. No, that they, is that, amazing. It's crazy. Now, I do have a quick no-no. I got some clothes returned. One was there was some fading I missed. And the other one, same customer, he didn't like the color of the jacket when he got it. And his email to me was, my monitor lies, meaning the color of his monitor wasn't what showed up. And that's fine. But he threw him in a box that was way too big. And I, I wasn't sure what I was getting. But look how this box showed up. Like, don't. don't that that Amazon that. smile looks not like yeah. that. <laughs> well, luckily, it was just clothing. I didn't get hurt. But uh, my gosh. <laughs> like, I, I didn't ship it to you in a giant box. I shipped it to you in a small box. Use a small box. Use the box I shipped it in. It kind of looks like a drunken face with little Amazon eyes. Yeah. Like. <laughs> All right. Oh. Time for our eBay tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you on eBay to be a better seller. Uh, from, for... A lot of the U.S. sellers, one of the things that, and I have actually probably posted responses on the thrifting board practically every other day. Somebody's asking about uh, shipping to Canada um, or even shipping to some other markets. But one of the key things is people, when you opt into the global shipping program, eBay's GSP program, it's a great thing to allow you to do international. But in some markets, it's actually extremely costly. Uh, and it it's just easier to the for customer you. to the customer to the customer. Yeah, yeah. It's just easier for you to do and stay with um, USPS. So the suggestion that I have is that when you opt into global shipping program, all the you, all you U S sellers that you select Canada and exclude Canada from the GSP. And then you keep us onto USPS international. It's 90% of the time, the stuff that comes up across the border, we don't get duty and taxes charged on it. What happens with GSP is it automatically adds all of those things in. So what could cost us $8 with GSP looks to us like it's going to be a $25 um, item. So it probably, from the responses I've got to people who have, when I've told them change this or add this, it seems to be pretty positive. So it's a help for you to be able to ship to the 10% of us up here. <laughs> and us Canadians love people who don't do GSP. 
Well, and I'll, I'm a piggyback. I have never really piggybacked on a on, on a co-host segment, but I'm gonna and I'm gonna read something from the chat because, of course, the chat disappears after the show's over. Unique for resale. Unique you resell says I opted out of it and shipped direct, and my international sales jumped in three years. Only lost oh jumped in three years. Only lost one package, and I ship everywhere. Look. I lost a package to LA once. I live three and a half hours. I live 42 <laughs> minutes from the border of California. I certainly didn't cut out California when that package got lost. And yes, I want to tack on to what Craig said. The way GSP works is they're going to ship it express and pre-charge the duties. If a package ends up that I'm sending to Craig and the duties don't get charged, that's good for the customer. They might get charged. They might not. When you do GSP, they're automatically getting charged. So your customer has no chance of paying less yeah and so canadian customers right away realize screw this i ain't buying from anybody on ebay that uses global shipping that's why i'd ship directly because i can do it and i usually make a couple bucks but it's still way cheaper so if i got ship something that cost me eight bucks i charge like 11 12 i make three or four that's still less than half of what gsp is and so the customer's like heck yeah heck the yeah one, the one market that i always think should always be gsp to is the UK because it seems that that's the only market that if you send by regular USPS, the number of people who complain that they got charged the VAT, which is their taxes there, seems to be the highest. So in that case, if you use GSP for the UK, United Kingdom, you're probably going to be safer. <laughs> yep. And look, the customs is automatic. People are worried about the customs for them. It spits out like anything else. There's nothing to do. It, look, it's easy. It's easy peasy. Oh, it is easy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's my eBay tip. It's actually in my hand. When you decide to put something away for a later time on a shelf, remember it's there. <laughs> so I got this new assistant. I did an inventory. I'm cleaning my office. I relabeled all the bins because new person in the office want to make it super duper easy to work. Whilst cleaning, Craig, I found this giant stack of Christmas CDs I never listed. And <laughs> But wait, it was there so long in the middle of it. Is a very good rare Halloween CD that I never listed, and even a Christmas ornament that's rare. So if you're gonna set stuff aside for later times, make sure you remember this was crap to find in the middle of February. Let me tell you, like, oh, ah. Oh. So there's my tip: pay attention to your shelves. But also, as you always say, Jason, Christmas sells year round. Oh, so oh yeah. Listed. <laughs> I will, but still, there is that spike that happens. In oh yeah, December that I've missed because I'm a moron. I right? just found some vintage Valentine's candy boxes that I bought at an estate sale about seven months ago, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you're like, <laughs> well, I found them on Valentine's Day, but that didn't do me any help to sell them. So they're in, they're in my hopefully next year Valentine's Day box. There you go. All right, and last but not least, jeez, uh, I forget my, um, let's go with this one tonight. Thrifting outside your comfort zone. Ah, run for your lives. Look, you got to get outside your comfort zone. You can conquer what you know, but to become a better seller, to become a better thrifter, you got to get outside your comfort zone. And Craig sent me pictures of some crazy stuff. We are so far out of our comfort zone when it gets to large items. Um, Jason's mom makes us think, oh, look for large items, and somehow it's gotten into our brain. But some of you just can't pass up. This is actually a table that we found at a Goodwill in the U.S. on one of our trips. It was covered with Christmas ornaments, but something about it grabbed me. I looked a little closer at it and saw this signature on the, the bottom corner that says Catherine Hennick. And then I looked up things on Google and my and good dog Rick Belanger looked up stuff. This stuff can sell for oh five hundred six. There's an end table listed for twenty seven hundred dollars. That's a signed Catherine Hennick. So we've got this. We're out of our comfort zone. We're not sure what we're gonna do with it. We'll probably want to do some kind of local sale to it. Um, we have we do a thing called Max Sold up here, which has a, we've done our first one. We're doing our second one next week. So we might do that locally because it can get some really good stuff. We might consign it, but it's large and I wouldn't want to ship this. So we might even go to an antique dealership and see what they would pay us for. But it's out of our comfort zone. And then the same place, the same way, something large and out of our comfort zone, we found at an auction 
this Seaberg record player. Now, Seaberg makes a lot of record players. This thing, it's on cardboard right now. You can see in the picture because it's about 150 pounds. Oh. It's huge. But what it was, and then we did research after we bought it. It came with about 80 records. We bought it for the records, got the record player. We're like, oh, crap. How do we get this into the car? There was a brochure that was inside it. And we looked it up. And this is actually from the 19, early 1960s. And it was the unit that was sold into diners and restaurants in the U.S. so they could play Muzak. <laughs> and every awesome. few months, they'd issue like 12 records, recall the previous 12, oh. and then they'd have these 12 things they could play for Christmas. Then they'd send them out like the New Year's. They'd send them out springtime. And... It, we found one of the interesting things was the brochure that we found for it. We looked up online. The brochure sold for $175. Not the records. What? <laughs> not, yes, not the records, not the actual unit. <laughs> the brochure. So we're out of our comfort zone on this. We're still doing a lot of research, but it was a $45 buy. Well done, sir. All right. So Kim's get on for a specific reason in a second, but I have her. I brought her up right now because I want to get out of my comfort zone and get into the dresses more. Now I can buy moo-moos all day long uh, because a I know them and b I wear them. Uh, that's here and her there. But I want to learn regular women's dresses, and so one day I think it was Kim, me and Robin. I don't know if Stacy was there, my wife or not. But we were in the dress section, and I'm just kind of going through. And I'm like, is this good? And Kim's like, nope, that sucks. Nope, that sucks. Hey. That's pretty good, and this is one of those. And I already, I just sold it, Betsy Johnson. Now, of course, I know Betsy Johnson's name, but I don't pay attention to normal dresses. And Kim's like, "Yes, get that." I think it was seven bucks, and uh, it sold for sixty dollars. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of a little tip there is: if you're with friends thrifting, you all have different expertise. So please make sure you share as you're out thrifting with your friends, because Kim and Robin were showing me girly stuff. I was show well, I'd say I'd show them boy stuff, but I'm a big girl. I was probably showing them music stuff. And uh it, 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 it helps, you know, it really helps. I would have never stopped and looked at this dress and I made decent money. And so now once you get a taste, it's kind of like drugs. Once you get a taste of a good sale on eBay, you want to find more of them. Like I want more. I want more. Yeah. All right. So let, let's say hi to Kim here while I bring up the next graphic. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi. Kim. Hello. So uh the reason Kim is on and uh there we go. Oops. Hang on. Pause. Uh, where, oh, my. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -oh, I was right. Where is my graphics I need? Oh, dear. They are gone. All right. Well, hey. Kim is my halftime show. Yeah, this is like, I, I don't know what happened. I prepped all this stuff, and uh, it is... I knew something was wrong with my laptop, and now it's like, ha, ha sucker. <laughs> All right, so let me talk about why Kim's on, and uh, uh, graphics be damned. All right, cool. No worries. All right, so uh, starting next week, uh, I have two classes in L.A. If you are in L.A., Orange County area, the link is down below in the description of the show. And uh, what I'm doing is on Tuesday, I'm having a classroom class where we're sitting – uh, for four hours, and I'm going to teach you soup to nuts, A to Z. I'm going to give you a bunch of bolos, so things you're out looking for in the thrift store. Uh, I'm going to teach you then how to take quality pictures of them, how to get quality listings, get them sold, get them paid, and get them shipped. We're going to be doing a lot of live demonstrations of shipping, uh, how to use the apps in the store, how to use third-party listers, how to use eBay, all kinds of stuff. So that's going to be on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday with Kim, and that's why Kim's on. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hello, hello. We're going to teach a class in a thrift store, and what's nice when I have a co-instructor, and this time it's Kim, is we'll all start off together. I will take you to a section, and while I'm taking you to a section, Kim's going to move ahead to one of the girly sections that she's going to show you, and she's going to start pulling stuff, the good and the bad. And so she is going to show you why you shouldn't buy this stuff, and the stuff that she found that you should buy, she will then distribute to the class. Now, while she's doing that, so let's say, Kim, you take them to the ladies' shoes first. Mm -hmm. While Kim's in ladies' shoes, I will be in the media section prepping it all. 
But when Kim's done with the shoes, she will then bring you back to me in the media. I will show you how to scan the media, how to find the best stuff. And then while I'm doing that, Kim will be in the dress section prepping. So it's really nice when I have two instructors. We go back and forth. And man, you really, I mean, talk about getting your money's worth. It's insane because we've got these sections prepped and primed and ready as you get back and forth to them. So Kim is going to do, what are you going to do, Kim? You're going to do purses? Purses? Dresses? Um, yes. Shoes? Shoes. Sporting equipment? Yeah. <laughs> I can do the whole thing, except music. I can't do that. <laughs> and no plushes, so. Yes. So, yeah, I'm going to do plushes and music. And speaking of, that's why I also had Kim on. For those of you in the Secret Beach, my webinar for this month, these are all the graphics I had that they just disappeared. My webinar for this month is tomorrow night, all about plush. Uh, Secret Beach is my subscription-based Facebook group. Uh, if you're not in it, it'll be open very soon. It's Brown Eyes Plush. And then Kim is doing her guest webinar next week all about collectible purses. And we ain't talking Coach, and we ain't talking Gucci. What are we talking, Kim? Tell, tell some of the brands we're going to talk about. Oh, God. The Enid Collins. Of course, that was, you know. If you don't know Enid Collins, you're gonna. <laughs> um, a lot of, a couple ones that are kitsch that are, you know, have from the 60s that have dolls on them. Um, we have the woven purses, straw purses. We got uh, um, uh, Harl Taylor. If you don't know Harl Taylor, yeah, those of you in the Secret Beach are going to love it. Secret Beach is a great group to really dive deep. So Kim's going to help me on the classes, and she'll be the guest webinar. So Kim's going to be around uh, helping all kinds of people. So if you're in the L.A. area, look down here. There's a link to tell, give you all the details. So if you, if you got any questions, hit me up on, uh, e, uh, on Facebook. And uh, I'm going to bring our guest in a second because I want to get Craig's graphic back up here. I lost Craig's graphic. So we're going to talk about Craig's uh, Canadian group. So, so Kim, uh, thank you very much for helping me pick a dress <laughs> or two. <Very> well. <laughs> Big and, girl. Uh, uh, thank you for helping in the classes next week. It's going to be a lot of fun because although I am Big Girl, it is nice to have an actual girl give you some tips and pointers. I look forward to it. Cool. Thank you, Kim. Sure. And we'll see you, uh, we'll see you around the Secret Beach. All right. Bye. 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 All right, so yeah, let me. Uh, yeah, I've lost. I, I'm so bummed. I lost all the graphics. All right, let me get Kim in here. Uh, Kim, let me get a net in here, and then we will talk about. Actually, Craig, why don't yeah. you tell us about your Facebook group while I'm getting everything else re prearranged here? Sure. Um, because let me tell you. Let me introduce it first. Sure. Canadians have special hoops they got to jump through, and they got different things that we got to deal with. And so, Craig, uh, Craig and I become friends. I knew he started a group and I wanted to help him because I really like Craig's demeanor. He's kind of all inclusive. He would never uh, shun anybody from his group like a true Canadian. <laughs> and he would not mind if people in his group help people in other groups because it's all about the love of helping. Right, Craig? Oh, yeah. Everybody's going to learn from somebody. Nobody's that much of an expert. Absolutely. So tell us about your group. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the graphic real quick. Um, well, we didn't even know what a group was until uh, last March. Any group, we like, I'd never did done anything on them. Um, actually, had been watching Thrift Hunters up here on a station called Makeful. Uh, did a little search with uh, Good Dog Hubby Rick Belanger and found um, your group, the Thrifting Board, and went, "Wow, there's groups that talk about this." And after a couple of months, we actually joined the Secret Beach, and then we thought. We kept seeing, uh, almost like some of the tips that I gave today, a lot of people asking stuff about Canadian shipping, how to send to Canada, what can you get in Canada. And we thought, well, let's start our own Canadian group. So we started Canadian Resellers and Fantastic Thrifters, uh, the acronym being CRAFT. A couple of people said, well, you shouldn't call it CRAFT because you're not CRAFT people. It's like, well, no, we're not. We're crafty people. Um, and the fact of the matter is that a number of the people that are actually in the group also sell on Etsy and are crafters. So just be, we thought we just thought uh, it works. So um, we started that up in August of last year, and we're um, thrilled so far. We're like we've got almost 500 members. We've had like another 10 or 15 join us in the past week, thanks to probably the Jason and the thrifting board on this. We're not exclusively Canadian because. 
we don't want to be just like Canada. We like have everybody in. So there's so many experts all over the place. We have members, about 85% of our membership is Canadian, but we have about 10% that's from the US. We have members from the UK. We have members from Singapore. And you never know what they're going to know, the knowledge they have on items. In Canada, especially, we have such a link to the United Kingdom. We po I've posted things up there and had our UK people say, oh, my God, that's from a BBC, a BBC show from 1978. It's like I would never have even known what that show was. And I wouldn't have known if there was no necessary British person on my board. So we, we invite everybody in. We try every day. Uh, on craft to post something that is some topic on a daily basis. Mondays, we do things like mid-century Mondays, and we focus on Canadian and American um, designers to try and help somebody learn about like a piece of artwork or what kind of signatures to find on pottery or what kind, what kind of things there are for mid-century design. We do uh, mind your business Mondays. So we use a lot of tips that we like we're learning and trying to teach people that we've learned from. Teresa and her boss group that's just started up from Jason and the thrifting board and from all the people that we actually learn a lot from. Tuesdays, we do a thing called uh, thrift it or throw it or Tuesday tip days and the thrift it or throw it or live videos where I go into a store and somehow surreptitiously try to uh, film and talk about an item without a bunch of people looking at me strangely. And then I've done a little research usually on it, but then I want to know what other people would end up thinking about it. And it's great to see the feedback on them. There's some of our most popular segments. Um, we're actually just prepping a summary now of what happened in January to let people know. And it's interesting, 50% of the time you have completely different opinions on things. And in some cases, we were 100% wrong. We should have, we, but we didn't know what people would say till afterwards, but um, we actually <laughs> wish we had some people live, which we actually do. Uh, Wednesdays, we, we do stuff. Thursdays, we have throwback Thursdays. Friday is Freaky Friday Finds, so we try and find strange things up there. So, again, they're not all Canadian, but no, and, and, and our right. state versus is called Value Village. So, <laughs> And that's what I love, and I just put the link. If you're in the chat right now, I put the link to the group. And, and, and I love what I love about Craig is he's a true Canadian. He's a gentleman. He's super sweet and kind. And Craig, you got a lot of Americans want to join because, like, someone's needed help with some tiki mugs the other day, and they're not in my group, and that's cool. I'm happy to help. So the fact that you're very you, you allow anyone to come in and help out yeah. and enjoy your group, I, I never align myself with groups unless I see the same kind of uh, uh, flavor I like to give in my group. All There's you know, everyone can come, give help. You don't have to be, uh, you know, shutting people out. And so I, I thoroughly enjoy that. And that's why I wanted you to join me tonight. It is absolutely an awesome group. I'm happy to help in there. Just I'm happy to help in my group. But let's talk about what bridges the three of us. It's Cleveland. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Wrong button. That's the button I was looking for. <laughs> Hello, Annette. How are you, my dear? Actually, the first one's probably more appropriate. <laughs> and, and real quick, I just want to show the graphics because I had them done for the show. So uh, here's the graphic for my plush webinar tomorrow. <laughs> and here's the graphic for Kim's uh, first webinar. Okay, back to back to Annette. I was so bummed. I had all this prep in it. I don't know where it went. Uh, Annette, how are you, yes. my dear? I'm great tonight. Very, very good. Glad to be here. And I have to, to let everyone know, and, and Craig, I told him this earlier, I did find my U.S. and Canadian flag pin that I acquired in the 90s when I went to Toronto, when I worked for NASA, and uh, went to a training class there on accelerated learning and met some nice Canadian people. And I gave them NASA pins. They gave me Canada pins. So, But they probably sold your NASA pins on each <laughs> so i hope so that's the way i look at it definitely <laughs> so let, let's start there so let's before we get into your ebay and stuff let's yeah. start with your real job which you don't have anymore because you've retired right wait a minute there's nasa in cleveland yes there is nasa in cleveland people you need to know that we are not one of the glamour sites however like you know the the, the ones that everyone knows about in uh, that place uh, florida and the one in uh, texas however they would not be able to do what they do if it wasn't for the fine research and development that takes place at the glenn research center in cleveland ohio um it's just a, a low-key a low-key facility uh but lots of great people work there and i had a wonderful 33-year career there, which was supplemented 
by oh, eBay. One of your friends in the chat, uh, Ann Mills, says that's where I, that's where Annette and I met. That's so yep. proud. <laughs> absolutely, Ann is so Ann is Woo! yeah, absolutely. Ann is Ann is one of the good ones, definitely. Um, she still works at NASA and is killing it there and on eBay too. So, so how, how long did you work for NASA? Thirty three years. Craig, what's the longest job you ever had in one shot? Uh, probably right now it's husband no uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ooh. it's okay my husband said that so that's the reason that, that's 31 years i'm the hardest job you've ever had i'm not <laughs> saying that. Years a job's pretty impressive that is damn impressive that is yeah well but it was really I was fortunate because the work that I did, it, it changed constantly because it was technology based. So when I first started, it, it was technology like, you know, the first IBM PCs and um, Umatic video. We didn't, you know, we weren't even to VHS yet. And then, you know, I was able to grow and develop and change with it throughout the years. So, you know, it always kept it fresh and fresh and different. So. So you worked at nasa uh, for 33 years and you're right. retired now what, right what right point, at what point did you were like i'm gonna throw ebay in this mix well it was in 1998 and uh, actually uh we needed yeah og here and uh i needed to uh we were liquidating my uh in-laws estate and we'd had a tag sale an estate sale and knew that there were a few items that we just weren't going to get the money out of that we that I felt it deserved. And I'd heard about this thing called eBay. So I decided to do some research and held those items back and bought a couple of things first to kind of get my feet wet and uh, started selling. Soon realized it was also a great place to uh, help my father, who has been a collector all of his life, um, help him get rid of some of his many, many collections. And it just grew from there. And I'd always had a love because of my parents. Um, of all things vintage and and collectible in fact at one point in the 90s i don't know if you do you remember the show personal fx it was on the fx network fx network was brand new and this was like in the mid 90s you, some of them are on uh youtube because i was you know, i was reminiscing about this and going wow it was a great show it was kind of like the view only it was with antiques and collectibles and they would go to people's houses and show their collections honestly jason if that show was still on the air now they would definitely come to your house i mean there's there's no doubt about it and i decided i i wanted to be an antiques appraiser for the longest time so but then anyway along came ebay and that kind of took off um and really enjoyed it and um i was Technology was kind of my thing anyway, so I had no problem with that aspect of it. And of course, the collectibles and antiques were my thing too, so that was no problem. Um, probably the, then the next sort of milestone was in 2005. I was starting to feel burned out from being at NASA, getting kind of tired of the whole routine. Um, so uh, I requested to go to a part-time basis. So I worked Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, which left Thursdays and Fridays open for me. And anybody who lives in the Cleveland area knows that Thursdays, especially, those are garage sale days. Um, so I started that, having different. I mean, we don't have Thursday garage sales in Vegas. Craig, do you have them in Canada? Hang on. Craig, you're muted for some reason. I just texted you. All right. Talk, Craig. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. You... No, we don't have Thursday or Friday. Wow. wow how's that how's that no, wow. Thursday, no friday oh no my friday. god you wait till saturday and you might as you know don't even bother yeah so it was great it was great and so uh, right about that time okay it's time to open up the store so i opened up my store elmwood cottage collectibles and um things just clicked along fine until then um or you know clicked along fine and then in um 2011 i was listening to ebay radio and i was hearing this guy on ebay radio all the time it was Jason Smith. And he, I mean, he sounded like such a nice guy. <laughs> and and he started this, uh, started a thrifting group, his first one. And I was one of the charter members. I think I was one of the first 25 people to join that group, Jason. You were, and, but, but, but be, pause right there because yeah. this is the Nets. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Go to the thrifty kind. Would you approach this man at the thrift store? Okay, go ahead, Annette. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, and it, through through his group, um, it was a much smaller than. I don't think you even had any admins. And so there was a lot of chat back and forth. And I'd made some, oh, you had just been in Cleveland and it was horribly humid. And I was saying that I was going to be coming to Vegas in September. 
oh, wow, you're coming to Vegas. And now we should get together and go thrifting. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, sure, fine, no problem. I got closer to the time and I knew you were sincere about it. So we were kind of communicating a little bit um, via Messenger, I think, on Facebook at that time. And uh, you'd said, yeah, let's get together and uh, we'll go thrifting. Uh, I was vacationing in Vegas with friends of mine. Uh, where there's a group of us that always went on vacations together. We'd rented a house. Jason was coming to the house then to take me and my husband thrifting. We go, so Jason comes into the house, comes in, you know, introduce him to my friends. My one friend looks at Jason and he kind of looks at him, you know, top to bottom and um, says, um, well, just want to take a good look at you. We don't know you. He says, you know, if our friends end up dead out in the desert, we want to be able to identify you. So let me take a good look at you. And he looked at him. He says, well, sorry, no distinguishing marks. I guess you, <laughs> sorry, Brian and Annette, I guess you're done. But anyway, we went out thrifting. We had a great time. I even found a picture of you holding the, the register tape from when we went thrifting that day. I think I got them off my flip phone. <laughs> Sure, it was, oh, it, was, yeah. it was a long time ago. Yeah. So things kind of, you know, went along fine then. And um, January of 2012, uh, the rug got ripped out from underneath me and my husband as he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. It's like, okay, we got this. You know, prostate cancer is one of the good cancers, right? Well, not so much. It had already metastasized to his, uh, to his bones. But still, you know, we were carrying on. We were going to make the best of all of this. Things went really quite well for Brian over the next year or so. And I, you know, through all of this, I just kept doing the eBay thing. Um, it, it was what gave me joy. You know, there's really no other word for it. Um, in about 2015, things really started to go downhill for Brian. Got much worse that summer. Um, in the fall, he ended up in the hospital, spent um, two and a half months in the hospital. And then in uh, December of 2015, he came home under the care, yeah, to our home under the care of hospice. And I cared for him then until... March 12th of 2016, uh, when he passed away. And through all of that, there was one constant in my life. And that was, well, there were other constants too, like my friends and the support. Um, but eBay, and, and not just the selling, not just the business, it's the community. I cannot tell you the amount of outpouring of love and affection and support that I received from people I barely knew. Some I maybe only met in person once, maybe twice, but it communicated uh, through the various Facebook groups that we were involved in. You know, people reached out to me. They gave me love. They gave me so much support. And I, well, my ringtone on my phone right now is I get by with a little help from my friends. And if that isn't true, wow. I don't know what is. Um, it was it was definitely um, a rough time, but I'm sure any you know it's not a far stretch for any of you to imagine that. Um, around that same time, my father lost his vision, um, so that was really hard for us. And going through what I went through with Brian, but when I would get respite care, one of the things I would do is I would head out to the thrift stores, and it may sound tacky to some people but you know I'd find just that great item and I'd come back and I'd share it with Brian and he was not into the whole thrifting thing but he supported me and he yeah, understood he, he went that day and he was just you know you and I were thinking he was just like whatever <laughs> yeah, that's, and, that, and that was Brian he was very much just go with the flow the most easygoing person in the entire world it's like pretty much yeah whatever you want to do in that I'll, I'll support you with that so you know it was a, a really really rough time but I was you know, kind of, he was gone. I was on my own and I just knew that I could do it. I wasn't afraid. And I also right around that time, I started feeling really burned out from my job at NASA. I, I felt like I wasn't giving it my all. I wasn't really getting a lot of love from them, but it was just a combination of me being there too long and it was time to move on. So Brian had passed away in March and then they announced soon after that eBay open. It was the first eBay open and I didn't even hesitate signing up. It was just like, I knew, yeah, I had to go. I had to go, I had to be there. And, um, 
just, you know, during that whole time, I was just surrounded with love and support and friendship. And that was the personal side of it. And then there was the business side of it. And for any of you who have been to eBay Open, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I felt respected. I felt valued. I felt like I had something to give. And oh, frankly, I wasn't really feeling that so much at my other job. So I was getting ready to move on um, after going through the clapping tunnel at uh, eBay Open. And of course, you know, then they serve champagne on the last morning. Hello. <laughs> okay, you had me there. You had me at mimosas. Um, I just had such a good feeling and just totally, totally knew that this is where I needed to be. So I went back to Cleveland. I started getting my ducks in order. I wrote my resignation letter. I took off with my friends for a trip to London. I came back the first Monday back, hit the send button on the resignation letter. Three weeks later, I was done. And I've never looked back. And again, please, I don't want to disparage anything about NASA. It was a great place to, lead, to, to, to work. But they were done with me. I was done with them. And uh, it was uh, the best decision I ever made in my life. So, so, so let me back up, though. Steph. Yeah. So, uh, Craig, and I don't, you know, Craig and I have been friends for a while, but I don't, I don't know this part. So I'm going to ask you, Craig. Are you a sports fan at all? Any sport? No, not really. Okay. So... When uh, when Brian came home for hospice, and that had his bed in the in the main living room area, because why? Because we're so pre determined to be sports fans, no matter our teams suck. <laughs> Brian had his bed in the living room so they could watch Browns game, even though we blow chunks. Absolutely, that you know you can be kind of at the end, but you're like, I'm going to watch Browns <laughs> suck until the end. So. Uh -huh. I actually said to Annette about the oh the Olympics, the loogies on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So anyway, it's it's been an adventure. I never doubted for a minute though I could do it. Um, it was it's just me. We don't have kids. Um, Brian and I were married for 36 years, and uh, but he prepared me well for life after his demise. And I've never looked back. Um, you know, you, you've got choices. You know, people say, oh, Annette, you're so strong. You're so this, you're that. Well, you know what? That's one thing you sometimes don't have a choice about. It's like, I really, I, I had to be strong. I had to, you know, I wanted to take care of him. I wanted to be there. I wanted to make, you know, his last months as wonderful as I possibly could. And I, you know, make the most of our time together. Um, but then when it was time for me to be on my own, you know, I'm, you know, full steam ahead. I'm not going to let it, anything stop me or stand in my way. And uh, so things have been going along pretty good. Um, last summer, talking to a good friend of mine, Carol, out at the real Elmwood Cottage, because yes, there is a real Elmwood Cottage that my store is named after. It's uh, been in my husband's family for 80 plus years now. Um, and one of our friends out there said, Annette, you need to come to my church's thrift store and volunteer. I think you would really enjoy it. There's women there. We have a lot in common. You know, they're in a very similar situation. I think you'd get along. And I thought, okay, things had sort of eased up and, and sort of evened out in my life. And I thought, yeah, I can do that. So I started volunteering last July at the Good Neighbor Thrift Shop in Avon Lake, Ohio. Mark it on your Google Maps and go visit us sometime. I've never been there. I'm coming. It's, yeah. it's a neat little store. It's not big. Oh, okay, Lawson's. Uh, you remember Lawson's stores, right? It's in an oh, old yeah. Lawson's building. All so. right, so, 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 <laughs> so, Craig, that reminds me of a good story real quick. Let me sidetrack in that for a second. Lawson's was kind of like a 7-Eleven of Northeast Ohio. Oh. And for so, a long time ago. I'm, I'm 47, so back when I was a kid, my grandfather had passed away. And my grandmother lived about three and a half miles from my house. So I'm like 13 years old. I would drive my 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 dad's Cub Cadet tractor down main roads <laughs> for three and a half miles to mow my, my, my grandmother's lawn. But I would come back and stop at Lawson's with a note to pick up cigarettes for my father. <laughs> Talk about a different time back then. I was picking up, you know, I think it was Lucky Strike Unfiltered at 13 because I had a note. Talk about different times, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Holy cow. 
Uh, I would well, cross it, a major road on a tractor yeah. and pain and no one ever said a word to me. <laughs> yep. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it's it's not a big store, but it's a nice store. They do a fantastic job there. Um, and I absolutely love it. I love the other women volunteers I work with. Uh, we have a great time. And I have the pleasure of pretty much dealing with the hard goods. There's a there's another group of ladies who take care of the, the clothing that comes in, but I help out with uh, the other donations. And that means, you know, boxes come in. It's just like, it's like Christmas for me. So somebody even said that to me today. So like, this is like Christmas for you, isn't it, Annette? It's like, yeah, pretty much so. Because I just never know when I'm digging through the box, what kind of wonderful things I'm going to find. And I think, you know, my experience with eBay and just, um, you know, know my experience as a reseller I think brings something to the table uh, for the thrift store I try to give them you know a little bit of insight on some of the things that have value that they may not previously have thought did have a lot of value um, so I price you know I clean things up I price throw a lot of stuff out and um, it's just it's a wonderful time and I am also able to purchase things and I have Purchase some wonderful things. Just some oh, some no, outstanding. So they're asking in the chat. Do you get first yeah. dibs? Yeah, I do. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I do. And now, no tiggy mugs have come in yet. No, not well. You have to understand. I'm only there four hours a week, so you know I don't see no. everything that's there. But, but no, will, I've yet to say, see. Uh, Sweet P five thirty in the chat. Her name is Annette too, and, <gasps> and when people call your name, she always looks around. But now that she knows, she comes in there all the time. She's gonna say hi to you. <sighs> Yay, very good. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there next Thursday. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a little uh, we're taking a little field trip next time I'm in town to there. It's a good so, visit, good neighbor, yeah. So Greg, next it's... time I'm in Cleveland, you want to come down and meet us? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. it's, not, it's, like, it's two hours drive. Yeah, so you, you cool. and your husband come down. We're, we're going to hang out. Actually, I think, uh, no, that's yeah. I think uh, Kim and Robin and Stacy and me uh, are going to come in for one of the holiday weekends and go flea market with my mom, so you guys cool. come down. We'll have a party. Woo. All right. Let's Excellent. get one. Uh, look, uh, through this all, you know, Annette's been through a lot, but, you know, she could have sat in the corner and sucked her thumb and just went, that's it, I'm done. But instead, mm -hmm. she is she is doing her version of Annette got her groove back. Yeah, absolutely. I'm too young. I'm too yeah. young to wither up and, you know. Do her I'm thing. Not, and so because. I'm going to play the widow card. <laughs> Because she's an eBay star like Craig and I, let's look at her scores for the okay. uh, most recent past. And so let's start with this thing that I would never have looked at in a million years. Well, that's because <laughs> you didn't have the parents that I had who taught you these kinds of things. But this was, I spotted this on um, on the shelf at the store. It wasn't something that I unpacked. And it was, um, I, it just drew, it drew me to it when I saw it. And then I turned it over and saw it was Royal Dalton. And I thought, yes, this is coming home with the net. And it's a Royal Dalton ball, <laughs> not ball. And um, let me see here. I paid $3 for it and I sold it for $75. Nice. Plus they paid shipping as well. And I am featuring all of my scores tonight are items that I purchased at my thrift store. Oh, and also I have to note, whenever something comes into the store that I am interested in purchasing, I always have um my the manager price them i say okay i said you know mary what do you think about this <laughs> and she'll give me a price and i said okay fine i'm gonna buy it <laughs> so um otherwise it just feels weird you know to do that because i don't want to cheat them and you know i just want to keep things above board with them because i really really appreciate the relationship that i have there so hey, hey craig do you use black backgrounds when you're doing white stuff um we've started to on a few things yeah yeah, so it, 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 look, look how nice this looks. If you put it yeah. on this uh, light, it turned background. out sharp, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it I was pleased with it. Phenomenal. Yeah, nice bowl. Yeah, Royal Dalton. Always buy Royal Royal Dalton. I've never had a bad time with it. So yeah, grandma grandma bowls. Hey, sold. That's all I care. So, what else we got? You got your cigarette lighter? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. This was it. It caught my eye. You know, I I can spot a vintage box from across the room. And this caught my eye and I opened it up and it was just this nifty little silver tone lighter, but it also flips open and it's a cigarette holder too. So it's very cool. Had the little um, felt carrier and everything. And um, what I sell that for, 40, about oh, $39 plus shipping. I think that went international as well. 
So that was that was a fun item. Again, bought it at the thrift store. I would have on used the shelf. That. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's very cool. I, I do the bowls twice by accident. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, this came in and I just fell in love with it. I knew immediately it was an old water refrigerator we, uh, bottle. Uh, the color is just simply gorgeous. And again, you know, back in the day, like in the 40s, they would uh, keep water in their refrigerator in these bottles. And I purchased it for $5 and I sold it for 80 bucks. So not a bad return on that at no, that's all. A, that's a cool bottle. Isn't that cool? Wonder, it, it, it has a lot about something like that. Now I'm going to be looking for green bottles. <laughs> uh, and it was just the color just blew me. And I thought that photographed really nicely too. I yeah. was I was pleased with it. The only hard part, it has a really neat embossed like waterfall design on the front, and it was a little tricky trying to get that. I had to get the light just right so I could see that, but it turned out very nice. And oh, okay, this is the athletic skirt. This I had to include because I passed this up one day. I was going through, you know, the racks a little bit. So I always take a little bit of time to shop while I'm there. And I was going through the racks and I saw this and I thought, hmm, I wonder. I, along with uh, Peggy, um, Jason's mother, um, have the Ohio Meetup Sellers Group. And uh, Ann Mills, who's in the chat right now, who I knew from NASA, she gave, hi Ann, she gave a presentation on athleisure. It was wonderful. I learned so much. And one of the things I learned is that mm, I need to go back and get that skirt. So I did. So this is, this is a, a shout out to the Ohio eBay seller, Ohio area eBay uh, sellers group. Join us if you're in the Ohio area. We meet uh, the second Saturday of every month at where else but a tiki bar Yay! in the area. <laughs> yeah, Tiki Underground in Hudson, Ohio. And it's just a fantastic group. So I have to give a shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, I went back and got the skirt and it sold probably within a week for $40. So thank nice. you, Anne. Okay. Oh, and this is this this was kind of funny. Uh, Jason and I were doing a, a tech uh, check last night, and while we were doing it, kaching, my phone went. And again, these were a couple of mugs that I purchased at the thrift store. Um, uh, Bad Badalo Hiera Pinheira. It's I don't know. My Portuguese is not very good. <laughs> my um, Portuguese is Latin. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> my accents off. Um, anyway, paid paid a. Paid a couple dollars for those and, and sold them for 25 so I was happy with that. So those are all thrift store fine. So, but believe me, I'm only there four hours out of the week. There's lots and lots of other good stuff there. So don't not go there thinking that, oh, gee, you know, and that's got all the good stuff because believe me, there's plenty of stuff there. Okay. All right. So, really so, nice photos too, by the way. I like a lot, all your photos. I like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank so you. I told, I told Craig before we started the show, I said, one of the nets. <laughs> Done. Sold for sixty. I cannot wait to hear mm -hmm. why this okay. is done. Okay, this 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 we shirt. All want sixty dollar duds. That's the <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, shirt beckoned to me from across the room at the thrift store, and I was drawn to it. You know, and uh, because I saw the graphic, and it's like, oh my god, I don't know what this graphic is, but I love it. And I got closer, and it's like, oh, Ralph Lauren, okay, cool. And it's like, oh my god, look at this like vintage 1930s sports poster type uh, graphics on it. And I just, I fell in love with it. Uh, some of you may may have seen it on uh, the thrifting board. I posted was looking for some keywords. When I first saw it, I thought, who keywords galore. But then after I got it, I thought, oh, I'm not really sure exactly what words to use. I thought it was going to be Olympics, you know, because of Ralph Lauren's um, association with the Olympics. But there's nothing Olympics about it. It's simply vintage sports. And it's mostly summery type sports. Oh, I just sold something. Oh, cool. Oh, great. So where did the dub come in? <laughs> okay. All righty. So <laughs> anyway, I really wasn't, I had, a, I had a gut feeling that I had something special. So my intention was to auction this and started at $59.99. But I'm using a new listing software. And um, anyway, I was... Uh, having a blonde moment and I put it up at fixed price and it literally sold within three minutes. Ah, yeah. So it's worth more than 60. Yeah. And as soon as it sold, first of all, the guy who bought it sent me an email and he said, don't let the haters talk you into canceling this. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, holy and, and, cow. And about the same, at the same time, at the same time, I got another message that said, I'll pay you 150 for it right now. If you'll cancel. 
Wow. And then the next day I got an e uh, a message through eBay from somebody says, if that shirt's still available, I'll give you three fifty for it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so now that's why how a $60 sale is a dud. That's how you make a $60 oh. sale a dud. I know, but I'm happy. And I told the seller, I said, trust me, I says, I won't do that. I said, I did well on it and you're happy. And that makes me happy all as well. Oh my God. I got the most glowing feedback from well, the buyer. You know, and you know what it is? You know what it is in that you're keeping your eye on the prize. It wasn't at that moment about the money. Right. It was about the customer service. Oh yeah. Because yeah. if nothing else, that customer will always remember you. Yeah. Like, I got to go back to Elmwood uh, <laughs> Cottage and buy some more stuff. <laughs> Oh, well, it was, it was great. I was so happy for him because he was so tickled and absolutely thrilled to pieces that he got this shirt. So, hey, uh, you know, I haven't built a 20 year successful business on um, screwing my customers. So I'm not going to start now. It's not worth it. So and thank God yeah. you didn't put it at five ninety nine. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was thinking, you know, around 60 bucks would be like what I'd like to get for it. But, you know, I just don't know. So I'm going to try an auction. And yeah, well so much for that i mean i i don't think i've ever had anything sell so fast it was great all right now Brilliant. another dot that's 30 dollars. like i i would okay. my was 699 like this is crazy okay. <laughs> this shirt okay this shirt i had this shirt in my store since 2013 yeah you know talk about lifey you know Listed, forget Listen, it. Listen, forget it. Yeah, yeah you exactly. Sure you really well, you know what? Five I years. <laughs> I love this shirt. Though. Okay, I, I'm a collector of Tinkerbell, and I found this shirt. It's like this is the coolest shirt. I loved it, and um, I couldn't sell it. And I, and I tried everything. I tried putting the price real high. I tried putting the price real low. And I think for the past two years, I've had it in my special price category in my store, which is fifty percent off. So it was really supposed to be. Only fifteen dollars. What it sold for thirty, right? Yeah, it was only supposed to be fifteen dollars because I'd had it on sale forever. Well, the time had run out on that particular sale, so my items went back to um, regular price, and I hadn't had a chance to change it. So in the meantime, somebody bought it at full price. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So it was a dud that became a stud, as we like to say in our oh, seller. I like that. Now, can yeah. I ask you, where the hell is Tinkerbell? <laughs> oh, it's, 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 I call it, hit, I think in the, in the, li, in the listing, hey. in the title, it's, it's called Hidden Tinker hidden because Tinkerbell. it's very stylized and it's, I use fairies. It's, it's, it's a fairies, um, but it has a Disney store. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I know it's, it's a very stylized. I yeah. I the whole time trying to go, where is Tinkerbell? <laughs> Tinkerbell's got her sophisticate on there. So yeah, she's she's looking very I know somebody on our craft board who probably would have easily paid more than your full price well, for that. And that's what I thought too. That's why I never took it out of my store because yeah. I still believed in Tinkerbell. I yeah. believed that, that it was a great shirt. And I just <laughs> exactly a plaque. Yes, yes, yes. Um I I just I felt it was a good shirt. I'd already done the work. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't costing me anything. I do know I, I had rephotographed it at one time when I had upgraded my setup, um, hoping that that would help sell it. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, it was a, a great dumb. photo on the black background. It makes that shirt pop out. So oh, yeah, much. that's a sweet photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's my dud that turned into a stud. I like that. I, what kind of camera do you use? Um, it is a Canon. Oh, okay. Um, Canon PowerShot. Yeah, I use I use a I don't use my phone. Okay. Although, yeah, I just use I started using my phone video uh, for videos though, Jason. After seeing uh, the segment you did with your mom, I always use my camera. Oh my God, the phone is so much easier. So thank oh yes, you. absolutely. See, always learning, you know. Always learning. That's that's Heck yeah. every day. All right, that's a little bit of a bonus show there. We went over, but uh, <laughs> Sorry, know, I knew we would because, you know, ha having Craig on, talking about his kick-ass Canadian group, having Annette on, talking about her whole story because there's a lot of parts to it, throwing Kim in there for a few minutes, uh, having a technical difficulty where I lost all my pre prep stuff. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I have no idea. And then I just realized I was talking to my producer, Rob, I'm like, oh, my God, we didn't do art for next week yet. So we got Corey and Britt on next week. They're called Rethreaded, and they take thrift store clothes, 
and things that you would think would be like, ain't no one going to use this, and they repurpose it. So that's going to be a kick-ass episode next week. So uh, normal time, uh, 9 p.m., 6 p.m. But what's going to be a bonus next week is I'm going to have some live guests in the studio. So I'm just going to tease it there. But, yes, we're going to have a full studio next Thursday. So 9 p.m. East Coast, 6 p.m. West Coast. Uh, Mom and I are doing our show. Normally do it on Sunday. This week will be on Saturday because Mom's going on another cruise. Come on now, Mom. What the heck? Uh, so Saturday, uh, I don't think we've figured out the time, but we are going to be talking about how to fix your listings. And eBay is telling you, hey, man, you got some problems here. My mom has a little bit of a hard time fixing them and getting them all fixed. So we were going to walk it through step by step. Sometimes eBay tells you you got active links. You know, you can't have. You got this wrong, that wrong. I cleaned them up real easy. I thought it was something super simple. Mom said, Jay, I can't do this simply. So we're going to walk through it step by step to clean up. When eBay says you've got a problem, we will get it cleaned up. So that'll be Saturday. Secret Beach members, tomorrow night, you got your plush webinar by me. And then next weekend, you got your purse webinar by Kim. So tons of great stuff coming up. If you're in the LA Orange County area and you want to join the classes next week, either click the link down below or give me a hit on uh, Facebook. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Make sure you give us a thumbs up over there. Please, thumbs up. If you hated us, give us, hit the thumbs down twice and let us know you really hated us. And uh, Annette, thank you, my dear. I cannot okay. wait to see you uh, for eBay Open because yep. I'll be next time we'll get together. And I'm rolling Craig, up my rim. I'm rolling up my rim. Did I, you win? Please play again. No, uh, please play. <laughs> so, Craig, Craig, we'll end on giving you a plug for your group one more time. Tell us the name of your group, please. It's Craft, the Canadian resellers and fantastic thrifters. And we got a bunch of people who have been in the chat who've joined us already. Uh, it's great to see you up here. Welcome all. And we hope more people, when they see this video and repeats, keep joining us and uh, keep joining Jason and supporting us all. Excellent. And uh, have a good night, everybody. And we'll see you this Saturday with Mom and I. And aloha. Aloha, eh? <laughs> <laughs>